What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here. So in this one, we're going to be talking about some of the secrets and a little bit of a masterclass on swing trading. You guys have seen me absolutely nail these swing trades over the last couple of weeks here, even when the market's been chopping around in a range. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to find these really high quality setups, how to enter them, how to exit them, position sizing, everything that you guys need to know. Now, before we get into the rest of this video here, you're going to hear me reference what I am using in order to find these really, really high quality setups. And you're going to hear the term traffic lights. Now, this is a term for the alert system and the alerts that are firing off over on the Trade 1348 platform. That's where I do my research. That's where I look for these swing trades and it works really, really, really well for me. Now, if you guys do want to join this platform with thousands of other retail investors taking control um, of their financial future. We even have a couple of millionaires that have been created from this. Not too many people uh, can say that. We also have one of the interviews with one of them linked down below in the description as well. Again, guys, you get your first month for over 90% off. It's $5 for your first month. Come in, we will prove to you why we are the best place to come and learn how to trade. But let's get right into it here and go over swing trading because for those of you guys that can't sit at your computer screens all day long, maybe you're at work, you have nine to five jobs, this is going to be perfect for you. So I prepared a little bit um, of a note sheet here just for myself, but here's what we're gonna go over. So swinging essentially involves two different types of trades. It's gonna make a little bit more sense in a minute here but I treat it as really two separate trades. Now we have to go over the entry, the scaling and the exit in which expiration dates are really gonna be making the most sense when we're swing trading. Trade management is another really important aspect too. Position sizing and portfolio allocation is probably the most important part of this video here. So make sure you guys stick until the end because there's a couple of key things that if you miss, you could really, really have some trouble in your portfolio. So make sure you guys stick around to the end for that. But the example that I always like to bring up has been Tesla recently. So when I'm looking at Tesla here on the daily, you can see right here that it has one of these giant yellow dots here, and that's an example of one of the traffic lights. So once I see this, well, what do I do? We're going to go over that in a second, but I just want to go over the actual amount of this move here. Even if I'm being very, very, very mean with the entry and bottom ticking this candle the day after, you see it goes on an absolutely massive drop uh, of about $100. $167 or 61%. And then as you guys can see here, another traffic light back to the upside. Really, really, really powerful indication of momentum here. Another $79 to the upside there. So these moves could potentially yield you thousands of percent. How do you find them? Well, again, you guys know where to find the traffic lights. They're over on the platform over there. Um, but how do you actually capitalize on these moves here? So Going back to the note sheet, swinging essentially involves two different trades. Now, what are those two different trades? Well, the first one is really going to be the day that you are entering. Now, in order for me to enter a trade, I need to see really one key thing. I need to see a five minute traffic light or a traffic light pop up on the five minute time frame that is in agreement with my thesis from either the daily or the four hour time frame. So in this example with Tesla that we were seeing back here to the downside on one of these days coming up, I would need to see a five minute traffic light to the downside. The reason why I like the five minute, well, again, if you're using those shorter time frames, the one of the three minute, those moves are going to be quicker and they may not be as large. When you're using that larger time frame, the moves most of the time are going to be a little bit larger. Now, what I love to do, and this is one of my favorite things to do with swing trading, is take risk off the table the day that I buy the swing trade. No matter if it's a three month out in time to expiration, five months, six months, we're going to go over that in a second too. Um, but the reason for that is that swing trading can come with a lot more volatility in the position that you are holding. We're going to go over expiration dates and how to avoid that. But let's say that you put in $1,000 into a trade and it ends up going up between about 10 and 15% by around the end of the day that you are holding it. Well, you have about 100 to $150 of gain there, and let's say you could realize about $50 of that gain. Well, that gives your trade a little bit of a buffer going forward because you actually realize that money, put it back into your account, and the trade has a little bit of breathing room and you're taking risk off the table. That is something that I absolutely love to do. Now, we kind of went over the entry there, the scaling in and out. Remember that 10%, 20%, I usually like to scale, slowly scale out of my position as it starts to go in my favor there. The exit, again, 
Uh, it can really be whatever you would like it to be. Um, in terms of stop losses, I'm still using about a 10 to 15% stop loss on these swing trades or another traffic light in the other direction um, of what my original thesis was saying. Very similar to how we trade this on the one, three or the five minute for day trades. Now, expiration dates. This is probably one of the most important parts of this video here. So when I'm thinking about trading on the daily time frame. There's a couple of reasons why you want to get, listen to this, three to six months of time to expiration. One is, is that within that three month time to expiration, theta or time decay really starts to ramp up as each day goes on. So when you buy more time, it lessens the amount of time decay or, or, or essentially uh, theta decay there, if you want to be specific, um, on these positions that you're holding. The other reason is that if you look at this move on Tesla here based off the daily time frame, let's see how long this trade actually took to bottom out. Uh, 71 bar, or, or let's see here, about 102 days or 71 trading days. That's a very significant period of time. Now, let's say that you only bought contracts with about a month out of time. So we know that this one was happening about at the end of September. So the end of October uh, is right around here. You still get that nice drop, but you miss all this additional movement here. So with swing trading, you always want to give yourself way more time than you think you need. So three to six months of time off the daily. If your thesis is coming from the daily chart, three to six months of time, not only to lessen the volatility of your position, but in order to make sure that if you're going to see this long drawn out move, you're going to be able to capitalize it on it i know people in our community were using these traffic lights to hit these tesla moves here and these were about 850 to a thousand percent trades riding it all the way down pretty good man um and then coming back to over here expiration dates so the four hour um you can technically get away with trading with a little bit less time on the four hour. For me personally, I like to get a month to two and a half months of time uh, just because those moves could be a little bit more short lived getting them from the four hour time frame. But the shorter you go in terms of time to expiration, the smaller your position sizing needs to be. Because if you are trading contracts and you have 10% of your portfolio in a trade that expires in two weeks and you see a gap down overnight and you're holding calls, you could be down 60% instantly, meaning you're down 6% on your account. You never, ever, ever want to be in that position. If I'm trading contracts with two or three weeks of time, I'm typically putting in about one or 2% of my portfolio. So my risk on every single trade is going to maintain a relatively uniform risk profile. Now, going back to over this note piece over here, trade management, Again, like I said earlier, I do like uh, to scale out at around 10 to 20% uh, to realize even more gains off the trade. Ideally, I would love to make some of these swing trades free. Um, we've gone over that in the past. Drop a comment down below if you do want me to kind of quickly break that down for you. We're not going to go over that in this video, though. Um, but I always like to take risk off the table as trades are starting to go greatly in my favor. Now, as we are starting to get into the ending part of this video here, I need you guys to pay attention to this position sizing and portfolio allocation part. We went over position sizing, and if you guys have been on the Trade 1348 platform for a while, um, you guys know you're never putting in more than 10% of your account into any given trade, and we are using the chart to tell us when the trade is actually not going to go in our favor to keep our risk super, super, super tight so we can risk less than 1% of our accounts on every single trade that we are taking. But with swing trading, things can get a little bit more interesting. And this is what I want you guys to understand. Let's say, for example, that around this time in the market here, Tesla, AMD, and Google all had traffic lights to the upside. Well, if that happens and you're going to go in with 10% of your account in each of those trades, you have 30% of your account in call positions, in bullish positions in the market. Now, let's say, for example, this is not what happened in the market and it ended up coming back up and reversing back to the downside. Well, it's almost as if you had 30% of your account on one trade because if you have 30% of your account split up between three different trades with bullish theses in the market, well, if the market starts to go against you, you have some massive risk on the table. So here's how I solve that. I usually will never have more than 10% of my account 
in one direction in the market for swing trading. That's also why I like to scale out as well. I don't like to see all that volatility in my account every single day. I like to aim for those one to 2% days, put the power of compound interest on my side. But I need you guys to understand that there, that if you start swing trading and you see, okay, well, I see all these traffic lights to the upside. This looks good. I'm gonna go in with 10% of my account on all of these trades here. You could end up with 50% of your account in calls. The market gaps down and oops, if you didn't listen to what we said before earlier about time the expiration, you could end up blowing up your account. The other thing that I want to mention with swing trading here too that makes it different from day trading, yes, it's very similar in terms of charting and, and looking at the market here um, and saying, okay, this is where the market could potentially go, but you have to do a little bit more analysis when you're swing trading. Here's why. If I'm day trading on the one, three, or five minute time frame, my average holding time is going to be between about 10 and 30 minutes. How many massive market moving pieces of data, economic data, a Fed speaker coming out within that time frame are going to happen? Well, hopefully zero. I don't really like to trade through news, but it's really going to be a low amount. Well, if you have three to six months of time to expiration, there's going to be a boatload of them. There could be 50 giant pieces of market moving economic news coming out. These are things that you have to be aware of. So you have to have a little bit more market context when you are going into these swing trades. But guys, hopefully you found some value in this video. Um, some tips and tricks here for swing trading. Again, it can be super profitable, um, but there is going to be some more risk. That's why you always want to get more time than you think you need to be able to ride out that volatility and to be able to capitalize on that full move. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will see you in the next one. Again, if you do want to hop into the platform with us with all of those thousands of people printing in the market every single day, make sure you check out that link down below. Use code PRINTCITY, $5 for your first month. Other than that, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.